this one. Hello. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Honestly, this is it's a bit of a surprise. Chris and I know we have a good idea and it's got some legs, but to see you guys validate it really means a lot. We really appreciate it. It's really an honor to be up here. We never, never, never expected this, but it's amazing. So, let's get into it. This is Chris, I'm David, and our platform is called Think Olio. Think Olio facilitates in-person salon-style learning. We don't have a link. <laughs> oh. uh, Good, easy. So, uh, funny enough, Chris and I just met last semester in uh, a social entrepreneurship class. And the teacher that we had for this class was just a lunatic. He was so passionate, just so amazingly engaging that he got everyone in the class to somehow stay 30 minutes, 40 minutes late every day after class to talk about worker cooperatives, something we had no idea about uh, in the past. He had us all fascinated by it, really, and it was just like the most amazing thing to be in there. It's something that. Like, we, none of us even really knew what it was before it started, but he was just so passionate, loved it like crazy. David and I would like, be like, walking to the train after class, and we'd be like, am I like echoing? There's this regular. Um, and we'd be like, how, like, how do we create this sort of environment? Like this, everybody's just like firing off one another. It's the most passionate learning that, like outside of, like this is rare enough to find in a classroom, but how do you create it somewhere that's not a classroom? I mean, so that was really, Go oh, yeah, yeah. No, we just, we were obsessed with it for a while. Like, how do we create this type of environment? And we noticed, all right, there's three major problems going on right now. There's no easy way that connects hosts, educators, and lifelong learners. That's the wrong stuff. Then there's, um, it's hard to find these affordable high-level classes in your neighborhood. And universities, for the most part, are limiting, they're exclusive, and they're expensive. So Chris and I really wanted to take our favorite teachers and share them with everyone, bring them outside of the university. Yeah, we, we loved everything about that class. The only thing that like really we didn't care for was the classroom. Like you're having these amazing conversations. Um, microphones are so weird, right? Um, you're having these amazing conversations, right? You're just loving everything. But you're like trapped in this box up on the 10th floor of this random building. But this conversation needs like such a more intimate environment. Like you should be in a coffee shop, in a living room, in like a library somewhere, somewhere where you can really, it's fitting to what's happening. And so we thought, let's take these teachers we love, let's put them in these unique, like great learning um, venues, like locations, and then let's give them complete control over what they're teaching. Like there's no curriculum, there's no guidelines. It's just like, let them loose to talk about whatever they're the most passionate about. So it's completely driven by the teacher's passion. But at the end of the day, it's the learners who are gonna choose what classes actually happen. So we have uh, what we call crowd learning that takes place on our website. And uh, this is a recent picture from our last class that we did. It was a jazz age salon. We went on Airbnb, we reached out to hosts like we do to get a lot of our venues, and we said, hey, can we use your space for this awesome jazz class? And the guy was totally into it. We had a crazy teacher, he was so engaging. Um, and he just took us through like this amazing time period, the Roaring Twenties. And, and you can see here some of our upcoming classes are right here too. And you can imagine coming on the site, you're like someone who's a little bit nostalgic for the classroom. You miss this sort of learning environment that really. It All right, you can't hear it. Side of school, but <laughs> just hello, hello, up. hello. Olio means an eclectic. I'm sorry, a miscellaneous collection of art and literature. And so that's how our classes are. They're very eclectic. They're all a wide range of topics. Uh, for instance, we've got the art of travel writing. This is taught by a guy who runs his own magazine and he has a co-working space. And Here so they're not, they don't, the classes don't happen until they're, they meet a certain threshold of students where the professor and the venue make enough money. And so this one, say this Sarah, a, one, a girl comes up, signs up for the class, but sees 40% funded, and she really wants this class to happen. So she's going to go tell all her friends about it. She has skin in the game. The professor also has skin in the game because they make a percentage of the profits. And then it's the same for the host as well because they're taking a percentage. So everyone, all three parties involved, have a direct incentive to try to help these classes go because it's mutually beneficial. So we found our teachers by listening to podcasts and reaching out. Uh, we look at different publishers, what books are coming out that are interesting. We go through course catalogs and find really interesting professors and we just reach out to them and it's sort of this thing where everyone wants to be involved and they're happy to join. Uh, we 
we've had a lot of success. It's been our first month. We launched five classes already. And the great part is it, there's no risk. We've already made money doing it. And um, these are some of our spots. So a teacher will come on and see those locations and we'll get to choose them. Uh, like I was saying, there's no risk in it because of the crowd learning aspect. And, and it's just been great so far. Meetup, you guys all know Meetup, it's a less, we're a curated version of Meetup with these high level teachers and professors. It's really a big slide. Just that online classes are very prevalent and it's a great resource, but it's pretty isolating to sit at home and learn, you know, on your computer in your room. And we're trying to bring back this in person style of learning. Kind of an analog version of learning where you're actually with people who care about the same things you care about, it's like that. Um, we have a lot of kind of uh, uh, marketing strategies that don't necessarily scale. Is there a time? Do we have like a... <laughs> so we made our own bookmarks. We're handing them out to people on the train. Anyone who's reading the book, we give them a bookmark. Tell them a little bit about what we're doing. We've got, uh, we go to Airbnb to find a lot of our hosts. We go to Meetup to find like-minded people and tell them about what we're doing. And then we have a referral program where friends can uh, refer other friends. We realize it's an inherently social activity to learn. Like you want to go to these with people. Um, you really, it's almost like as much fun as going to a movie. It's $15 and you're going and you're getting something out of it rather than just like enjoying uh, an hour, two hours of people blowing each other up. It's a lot, it's, it's a lot more beneficial to <laughs> Alright, so like I said, this is basically an experiment for us right now. It's an experiment that we're able to make money off of, so it's pretty great. Uh, we're playing with the numbers right now, but this is how we've broken it down uh, based on our research and surveys that we've been getting after our classes. We've been bringing in about $300 a class, uh, and we give the teacher 50% of that, the host 30% because they're really setting up everything, and they're supplying different things for these classes. And then our goal is to not even touch these classes, maybe not even be at all of them, and we collect 20%. Well, definitely not. Oh well, yeah, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> when they're <laughs> happening, we want to be at all of them, but we won't be able to because they'll be all over the world. When they're happening in Spain, we might not make it. Yeah. Um, this is just a snapshot of what our growth might look like without any uh, financial backing. This is us just using our revenue right now and our sweat equity. Um, like we mentioned, we've already had five classes in the first month and a half, and they've just been, we just find professors who teach the match with the venue, and we just make it happen and fill them whatever way we can. We just make people come to them right now, really. But then people love them, everybody loves them, the teacher loves them, everybody learns, and it's an amazing experience. And they are growing, like, we're having more and more every and there's, and there's these different avenues of how we can grow because uh, just the other day, a uh, public school reached out to us on the Upper East Side and said, hey, I'd love to do some programming. I saw that you guys have a Duke Ellington class. I'm like a huge Duke Ellington nut. Can you bring that teacher to our school? And we'll pay for it. Uh, it'll be for the PTA and for all the parents. And we were just thinking, wow, this could be a thing we can use for different businesses, sort of like a bonding thing for We're working for the with Etsy too to host classes at their uh, entrepreneurship classes for the people in their community and really different things like that. Um, so as crazy as Chris is, he did build an awesome website, you know, he's like our CTO guy and it's completely functional. Uh, we didn't put much money into that and it's working great. Uh, we've held classes, we've been getting press coverage from our teachers and our hosts because like we said, they have this incentive to help us build the classes since they're getting a percentage. So it's really been pretty easy for us. And the Gothamist came from a, someone who had just released a book, and so they had these press connections. PSFK actually came from a coffee shop that had just opened, and so they were trying to get press anyway. They just plug our name because it's something cool to be associated with people that come into your coffee shop to learn. And so we've got a thousand people on our mailing list, which is great, and every day we're just attracting new teachers and hosts. Uh, in the works, we're working with a lot of people, like a lot of friends and peers who are doing uh, things that are mutually beneficial. Uh, they're building our bio video, uh, we have people building our brand image, and this is all free. We're just you know, cross-promoting each other. It's really great. It's a part of the shared economy that we're seeing right now. And um, we, down the line, we'd really like to incorporate a subscription model so that people can get bundled polios at one time, sort of like a membership. <laughs> and uh, Right now, we're really just trying to talk to our users as much. 
much possible talk to people come to the classes. How do you learn? How does this work? And figuring out which teachers are the most effective and why that is. And so we're doing well without money, but if we did get money, you know, right now we're just in New York, but once we figure New York out and get a strong following, we want this to be everywhere. We think this should be accessible to all people. So that can help us uh, market and grow and also add some more functionality to the website. And Chris and I are going to do it full time. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. some on the weekends, um, but we really try to choose topics that are going to lend to discussion and conversation. Uh, lectures are great, but we encourage you know, Q&A throughout the whole thing. You can interrupt the teacher, and uh, it's been pretty good. It's about the teacher learning as much as the students are learning. We really want teachers who are passionate about being there because they want to learn too. They're trying to grow. And we, that, like, I keep reiterating it, but I think the only way we're going to grow the right way is by getting the right professors. We're just focusing on the very best professors. You've said, that few, you've said that a few times. How do you ensure the quality of the, of yeah, the educator? I love that. Now, uh, right now, it's a very hands-on thing. We're talking to people who've had the teacher. We're in, talking to the teacher. It's a referral process. Like I said, the best teachers tend to know the best teachers. And so if um, it's kind of like a vouch. Like if, if a teacher says they love this person, or you can go on, rate my professor, and we go through the ones that are like, I never wanted this class to end. Like this was the one that had my attention. And if it, that's the professors, but if it's an author or a journalist, we'll read some of their work, we'll look at their YouTube videos, we'll see, like, does this person really command a room? Do they get respect? Do and podcasts are great. You can hear how well they speak and right. how well they interact with other people on a podcast. But it really is a hands-on process. But that doesn't mean it can't scale. I mean, there's still people who watch every single YouTube video to make sure that there's no problem. So I think we should be hands-on with this. How do you scale this? Well, um, the fact that our hosts are getting a percentage, and that we're going to build a database of hosts makes it so that we don't have to really look for the spaces ourselves. Hosts come to us, and they can just be going on anywhere, multiple classes a day, and Chris and I we just have to worry about the back end. Yeah, it's, it's such a hands-off. Once we have, like, this platform is a little bit hands-on still. We still add each teacher or host by hand, but eventually it'll be like a Kickstarter or wherever where you host and put in an application to become a teacher. We just run through it. Maybe phone call and talk over the phone or see some of the work that you've done to approve you and then your life. So we will just grow city by city once we tackle like the New York market really figure out what works then we can move on to other cities with quality. maintaining the quality. Yeah, no, you're right. it starts with the professors. Is there a reason you don't come up with a uh, higher educational institution? I mean, I know locally there's a, one of our local colleges here has a similar program of the same thing, and people wait for that catalog, and when that catalog comes out, they're immediately sold out. So, have you ever thought about teaming up with um, a school or two or three? We, we really want to. We actually have a meeting next week with someone about that. Um, and so hopefully we can start teaming up, especially because the people who usually take those classes are the ones who, are, who really want to be in the classes. So that's, um, those are the professors we want, and those are the students that we want, the ones who sign up. And we would love if these institutions just used our platform to sort of promote their, their own program. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.